a mentor said to me, it's not your job to control what they hear. Your job is to send it out. Right. And so what I've realized is it's just like a patient, like I can't control their, their healing process. My job is to deliver the thrust in the best way. And the most like, you know, beautiful, artful adjustment that I can and communicate around that. Right. So same is true with giving a talk. It's actually a very similar concept. Hello, and welcome to Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. This podcast is dedicated to chiropractors who are in the seasons of launching and building their practice. Join myself, Dr. Lona, and my co-host, Dr. Bobby, as we have conversations each week as it relates to building the practice of your dreams. And remember, you can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. We are here to lead you on the way. What's up, team? Welcome back to the Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast with the amazing Dr. Lona Cook and myself, Dr. Bobby Lejathwick. Lona, what's going on, lady? How's your week? Ah, it's going great. How are you, Bobby? I'm fantastic. I'm fabulous. Tell me, uh, what's the biggest highlight of the week for you? What's the big win? What's the highlight of the week? What's a cool share that you want to share with everyone? Okay. Well, this is in my personal life. We just bought a family RV, which if you would have asked me five years ago, if I'd be an RVing mom, I wouldn't have known if I would have said yes to that, but we bought an RV and I'm in my era of RVing with little boys (laughs) and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we went on our first camping trip last weekend. So that was fun. So you guys are going to be taking your RV camping and different campsites and different day excursions, night excursions. Oh, yeah. I like, I think we're going to try and hit up like the major national parks. So we're going to go for like weeks in the RV is the plan. Um, and and so, yeah, <laughs> it's, I'm wearing a different hat than I've ever want, worn before because I never was a camper per se, but we're going to try it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that yeah. sounds awesome. You're yeah. going to play plenty of great memories. So I'm sure you guys are going to have beautiful experiences together in the RV. Yes, very true. And I'm excited because I think it'll take me away from the office a little bit longer than I'm normally gone for, which will be a good, as we were talking about in a couple podcasts ago, of the importance of taking vacations and stretching, you know, that muscle of leaving the practice so that you can come back well rested and grow, right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. And what about practice, Lona? Give us a practice victory. What's some success that Dr. Lona Cook experiences in practice? I'm sure all the viewers and listeners would love to hear a little bit about, all right, what's a win that you've experienced? What's something cool in the office that's happened? Okay. Well, we just had our first um, in this semester, because you guys know we have one practice that operates in our public school system. Um, we are been going through hundreds of re and new patient evals in the last. So we can you imagine in our practice that operates in the school, instead of doing new patients like 10 a week or 20 a week, it's like doing 50 to 100 new patient exams in a week is a normal part of the ebb and flow of coming into a semester and then a reeval process on the egg. So, you know, you want to expand your horizons of how many exams you can do in a week. Just come watch for a couple of days here. So my team that operates in the school just went through like 150 evals in the last week and a half or so. Um, starting new students and getting old students returning um, ready for their chiropractic care for the semester. And they've still got like 150 to go. So it's pretty exciting to see that happen. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really, really super cool thing to just kind of like pause for a moment and reflect on because in chiropractic often, you know, we hear about these mission trips. And one of the reasons that they encourage a mission trip, uh, particularly early on in your career, is because it helps you expand your horizons of how many people you can actually adequately adjust in a given period of time. And, you know, we're conditioned into this way of thinking and then maybe we kind of have certain self-limiting beliefs of how many people we can adjust. And then you go on this mission trip and suddenly you see thousands upon thousands of people lined up to get adjusted and you're like, whoa, all right, so that number is a lot higher. I can safely and effectively um, you know, with love and with intention, adjust way more people than what I thought. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of get this feeling now from what you just said there as well with new patient evaluations, because I know a busy office, regardless of how many DCs it has, 20, 25 new patients in a week, that's a busy week. There's a lot of moving parts to process 25 new years, 25 reports. And to me, it sounds like you guys have done in excess of that and really probably achieved the same thing in terms of stretching your horizon. Is that accurate? 
Yes, yes. We all kind of, you know, get in that a little bit frazzled mode during that time period. And we have a few new doctors right now training in because it's really expanded in the last six months. And so you can see their eyes, you know, growing <laughs> as they realize what they have to do, as well as what they're walking through and just like getting the notes in and doing all that. But it sets up this really beautiful flow for the rest of the semester. It's just instead of doing it over, you know, like, 50 new patients in a month, it's like, no, it's all at once. And then it sets up, you know, this, this well-oiled thing of like bringing chiropractic into the schools and kids come out of class for a few minutes and get their adjustments and go back to class. It's beautiful, but it is a heavy lift on the front and back side. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I love it. Hey, we're going to have to do a podcast episode in the future about a couple of things there. One, I know people want to know more about the school setup and how that works and how that looks, because that's totally unique in chiropractic. And the second thing is too. Um, how is it that you process 50, 60, 80, 100 uh, plus new patients like that? Because there's definitely lessons to be learned there. You know, there's a great podcast idea. Maybe we're going to do a unpacking a day one podcast episode. We really go through the nitty gritty of day one. Uh, we can do it through our existing lens, but then I'd love to hear it through the lens of how you guys do it in the school when you do that while you're going to day one. <laughs> I might Love have to it. bring a guest on because Dr. Amanda, my partner in that school, she is the master at that because she has learned how to make it so fluid. So, Absolutely. All right. There is gold and nuggets there. There you go, guys. You heard it here first. A podcast episode that's going to be coming up sometime in the future about how do you just nail your day one and do way more than you think is possible. Mm. But in saying that, it's actually the perfect segue to what we're going to be talking about today. So when you learn and master what we're going to be talking about, not just today, but in next week's episode as well. Um, I promise you that you are going to have an abundant flow of new patients. You're going to have people that literally are flowing into the office that you won't know how you're going to be able to process this many new people. Um, the system that we want to talk about today is, I would say, one of the most common things that I get asked about in chiropractic, and rightly so. There's a reason for that, because when mastered, this has the power to absolutely transform your office. And I would say that it is one of the most leveraged and fun systems inside of a chiropractic office. I would also say that is one of the most win-win systems inside of a chiropractic office. So when this is being done and being done properly and regularly, absolutely the office will win in multiple ways. Uh, obviously, you're going to generate a lot of new people into the office, but it's a huge win for practice members and potential practice members because one of my purpose statements, Lana, is to lead educate and adjust okay, as many families as possible towards optimal health and wellness through principal chiropractic care and vitalistic health principles. Now, when I think about what differentiates me and how do I not commoditize myself and just, oh, it's another chiropractic adjustment that I get from anywhere else, it's actually the first two parts of that. It's the leading and the educating part that's our differentiating feature. The way that we lead, the way that we show up, the way that we train, the way that we invest in ourselves, okay? It goes through multiple areas of the office. But the second point there, the way that we educate is absolutely a differentiator. You know, they say to go the extra mile because most people won't go there. I would say that this education piece is that extra mile. And so what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is one of my personal favorite topics. Lona, I know this is something that you also hold dear to your heart. It's one of the most leveraged systems in chiropractic, and that is... Speaking, okay, whether that's speaking inside of the office, whether that's speaking outside of the office, external events, internal workshops, advanced workshops, dinner workshops, better results, faster workshops. We've all heard about all these different workshops, which at times can be confusing, but we're going to make now, guys, the next two episodes a complete unpack on workshops. And I'm super excited to get into the nitty and gritty of this. Um, Lina, talk to us a little bit about workshops. So what are your thoughts on workshops? Is this something that you feel as though every practice should be doing or is it just people that are good at public speaking? No, I. you have a voice, right? And your voice allows you to convey your heart and your mission and your purpose. And so if you can do it more than one-on-one, -on -one, two to one, five to one, 10 to one, 30 to one, 500 to one, you know, it is a great tool for getting people to really like recognize their like connection to you where they not only get to like hopefully hear great information you've pre prepared for them and take them through a, a journey in your talk, but also feel you, right? So it's such a great tool, not only for education, but also for just like attraction, right? Bringing people in because they truly get a, a chance to like recognize your message and your passion behind it. So I think it's, yes, it's a, it's an amazing thing to do and you will continually get better at it if you practice. So yeah, 100%. 
I said earlier that it is the ultimate win-win for both the practice and for the practice member. I want to talk about the practice member first, and then I'm going to talk about the practice second. And then in today's episode, we're going to really zoom in on how do we fill workshops? How is the process that we actually get them full? So benefit for the practice member. I remember once hearing that the highest quality of new patient is a referral. And, you know, the reason why it's a referral is because somebody has already told them these guys do good work. There's already an expectation of what's going to happen. They already kind of know roughly maybe what your care plans look like and what your evaluations look like. They have um, an experience through somebody else of your office before. And so they would say all of these reasons are why an internal referral is the best quality of new patient. And then I discovered slightly and politely that there's actually one system that is better quality internal, uh, sorry, better quality new patient, I would say. And that is a new patient that's come from a properly executed workshop. And if you think about the reasons why, all those reasons above still apply, but they've had the chance to experience you. They've had the chance to feel your energy, your presence. And on top of that, when you build your workshop properly, you can in that workshop frame up what does the experience in your office look like. There is a specific way that when you go through your workshop, you could start building a case for timelines around healing. In fact, I ran a workshop last night and one of the repetitive themes that by the end of the workshop, the audience was repeating back to me. And that was, guys, what are the two key things that are needed for all processes and especially for restoring our health? And the audience would say back to me, time and repetition. So you're building inside of them an understanding that time and repetition is what builds best outcomes in life. And so when we get to our day two with these people, when we give a recommendation of care, a report of finding, they already have that level of mindset they're taking into the report that I understand this is going to take time and repetition. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, um, next episode, we'll do an execution of workshop or shops. But in our workshop, we build in at the end of the workshop, you know, before afters, we show before afters, before afters, we put timestamps on those before afters. We talk about the journey through care and how it looks. So they already know, you know, our initial intensive care plans. They already know the process and it's the highest quality patient you can get inside the office for that reason. Lona, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's beautiful. I just want to learn from you because I think you are masterful at this and and clearly workshops are something you guys have executed on probably at the very tip of the like top of the totem pole of like we could learn, at, you sit at your feet and learn from you, Bobby. Well, I'll share everything on this. I appreciate the wise words uh, and I'll share everything. So as we go through today's uh, today's podcast, guys, if you do have questions, please reach out. Uh, reach out to either Dr. Lana or myself because I want to make sure that you are absolutely executing workshops inside of your office. Now, everything starts with the why. I feel as though you've got to get clear with the why. And I just spoke about the win for the patient, all right? However, here's the win for the practice. I was once taught this by the famous Dr. John D. Martini. I went to interview him. Um, so, so he was speaking at a big event here in, in Australia. And I had the orders, can you go interview him? He's there. It was probably like two months before the event. But can you go and interview him one-on-one to promote the event? So there I was. You know, I was pretty young out of school at that time. But I was like going to interview John Demartini. And I had one-on-one spare time, right, free time, I should say, with uh, the famous Dr. John Demartini. So we did a little promotional video. <laughs> I know, right? Totally awesome. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, oh, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. What do I do? What do I do? So anyway, um, so we finished the interview with him. I learned a lot. We probably spent about 30 minutes together. I can tell you the lessons I learned in that 30 minutes were profound. Maybe I can share some more in the future. He definitely gave me some wise words of wisdom one-on-one early on in my career. But here's one thing that stood out for me. He asked me at that time, what am I doing to build my practice? And I was pretty new in practice. And I told him what I was doing. And, you know, I was doing a lot of spinal screenings at that point and internal referrals. Um, there was no social media still in those very early days. It was probably my first one or two years out in practice. And, um, and he goes to me, okay, so let me share my journey. So he shared his journey. And he explained to me that he started to get himself busier and busier with adjusting. And he asked me, how many people do you see in a 15-minute appointment slot, right? Like he did the little mini breakthrough. And I was like, well, I see this many So he goes, he worked out how many can you see in an hour? So he's like, okay, so you can see. And at that time, I think he worked out, I could see 30 people in an hour. And he's like, okay, let's just say you can see 50 in an hour. And how much do you charge for an adjustment? And at that time, I believe we were charging like 60 or $65 for an adjustment. So he basically like worked it out on the spot. He's like, okay, so your billable hour is $3,000. Like that's the most that you can build in an hour. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is, $3,000 an hour. That's awesome. Then he goes, that's the realization I had in my journey in the office. And then one time I went out to speak and not many people believe me, but I was a horrible public speaker. He was telling me this. 
And I was a horrible public speaker, but I went out and I spoke to a group of people. And he goes, and through that talk, I signed up 23 new patients into my office. So he goes, that day I sat down and I worked out what is the lifetime client value of a patient in my office? And it was roughly around $2,500. And he goes, and I just went and I did this speaking event and I signed up 20 odd people, 23 new patients. So 23 times $2,500, because I sat down and worked out that's a $57,000 hour for me. So he goes, I quickly then worked out that my highest leverageable hour is actually not adjusting, even though I love doing that. He goes, my actual highest leverageable hour is speaking and getting out to the masses and bringing people into my office. And so I won't go into detail, but then he told me about his journey about how we would onboard one associate, two associates, and you know, multiple associates, ultimately getting to the point where basically 80% of his time was going out of the office, speaking, bringing people into the office so the associates could be adjusting everyone. So for me, that was really profound because I looked at that and I go, wow, what a way to look at it. You know, $57,000 hour from a business perspective, if you learn this one skill set of being able to influence one to many. And I can tell you that my experience has been exactly the same. When I heard that message and I was blessed to hear it very early in my career, it quickly dawned on me about why workshops are the ultimate win-win. They're a win for the patient. And that's where my purpose statement was born. And that is to lead, educate and adjust people, but they're an absolute win for the business as well when nailed and when done properly. Yeah. Has your experience been the same, Lana, in terms of win for the patient and win for the office when you guys go out into the community and speak? Yes. And and I think, again, if you're thinking like, well, I don't know if I can even bring in two people, right? How do you get to be the person who brings in 23 people? You You learn, you train, just like you would learn and train on a day one, right? Like the same is true in your execution and your ability to give a talk. Don't expect yourself to be perfect at when you start. You're going to need practice at this. But but putting the intention into this is really meaningful for the longevity of my career to build this muscle um, is some of the best time you're going to spend training yourself. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you in my own personal journey, here's what happened to me. My first workshop that I ever did, uh, surprisingly enough, I actually nailed it. It was in a construction company. They, were called, they are called, I should say, Oricon. And I went into Oricon and they had, I think, 32, 33, 34 people there. And I'm going to talk in a second about how we got this opportunity and how we get all these opportunities. But I went to Oricon, there was 33, 34 people there. And we did a workshop and myself, my wife and one of our other chiropractors went there, the three of us. And I remember walking out of there and we signed up 31 new patients out of 33, paid and booked. I know, right? And I remember going to a restaurant after. It was a Japanese restaurant. I never went to a Japanese restaurant and we were just stoked. I was like, man, how long would I have to scream for to sign up 31 new people? Mm -hmm. And I just did it in like a 45-minute presentation with like 10 minutes on the back end of that. I was like, all right, this is where it's at. <laughs> so that was my journey. But then the next two, three, four, five were actually pretty ordinary. <laughs> so I didn't get that. I wasn't able to reproduce that result. <laughs> yes. You know, I was getting like onesie, twosies, onesie, twosies. But one thing that I didn't do is I focused, I kept doing repetition, I kept learning, I kept immersing myself. And slowly over time, my results just got better, but they also got more predictable as well. Yeah. What was your experience, Lana? I'd love to hear, how did it work for you? Did you nail your first one or was it a process that you kind of like built up to? Or what did you find? No, I, I the first talk I remember, and I think I only remember this because there, I was in an outside talk. It was, it was an outside talk in a restaurant that I had like rented the back room or used the back, rack, back room there. I, I don't did a remember. Workshop. I did a workshop, but I don't remember even what the topic was. Obviously, I'm trying to lead them to chiropractic. And of the two people, one of them signed up. But the funny part is, is she is still a practice member today. So almost 15 years later, I don't think she's missed a month. And I, I kid you not that I think back if I probably could listen to myself that first time, I would probably just, it'd be like cringeworthy, 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 right? Of what I actually said. But I, I know that my heart was pure and wanting to like share what I had to offer and like and leave people um, better for like sharing it. Right. And so, you know, keep in mind that sometimes the way you show up, even despite what you said, is going to bring people in because they're looking for people who truly want to help. Right. So then I realized I had to get better. So I went to Toastmasters and started practicing the art of crafting talks. And I did that for about a year. Um, and I just kept saying yes, you know, so whether it was a way that I could create a talk in the office and have three or four people or five people or 10 people come or go out to a business and do a stress break or a lunch, you know, lunch and learn scenario. We would do that. And we still 
for the most part, don't actively seek out a ton of external talks. We create internal talks or we do a dinner with the doc every once in a while. And then we obviously have our patients bring their friends and family who aren't patients yet. And that leads to obviously them becoming new patients. Um, but I think like you, you can't expect yourself to run the marathon when you haven't run, you know, a 5k first. So like, you've got to start somewhere and some of it is just letting, letting yourself be poor at it at first. So you can say, okay, I got that first one done. <laughs> I didn't die. And now I can, um, you know, jump off and have a springboard from there to keep learning and getting better at it. Yep, absolutely. I agree. Hey, so can you just share for us for a moment? Because I watched you speak and I know that you're an absolute world-class speaker and watching you on stage is smooth, effortless, engaging. And I know a lot of people listening to the podcast have seen you speak. Um, you're an amazing speaker. Thank you. But I also have a feeling um, by nature, you're an introvert more than you are an extrovert. Would that be accurate? You know, I don't know. I think as I've gotten older, I've become more introverted. Um, I don't know. I don't actually know how to answer that because I grew up in a family of extroverts with the exception of my mom. And so I think I wired myself like closer to my father because I I just knew that in order to have a voice with him, you had to have a loud voice, right? Sure. So um, I think where I learned how to speak differently as I realized I can, I can only feel comfortable speaking generally on something that I really feel truthful about. And so like getting, you know, like I can't take someone else's talk and deliver it. I could do that, but it's not going to feel, it's not going to feel like I can, I can send it out from a place of power. So even if I use their content, I have to make it my own. And then it, it really, it does that thing where it comes from your head to your heart. And that's where you can really resonate with people. Um, and so don't be afraid to do that with the material, like take the, take the framework, you know, of someone who's given a great talk, use the bones of their talk, but let it resonate with you so that when you share, it comes from a place of power. That's what's helped me the most in speaking. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point because I have a lot of people that ask me for my external talks and I'm, I'm fine with, you know, giving it to me, offering them to them, but it comes with conditions that there's a way to use it. But I guess the reason why I ask you the question is, the first time ever that you were going to speak, I'm sure that there was probably oh, a nervous knot in your stomach. How did you push through that anyway, even though those nerves were very real and like you maybe have self-limiting beliefs? Because I know a lot of people listening to this will think, I can't public speak. Like, oh, this is too scary for me. I get it. But like, I don't Oh, oh you've got to re-inspire me to start doing it again. What are your thoughts? How did you break through that? Yeah, I still get nervous uh, for sure. I'm going to speak at mile high this weekend, you know, in front of 600 chiropractors and I'm already nervous for that talk. Um, so a, a mentor said to me, it's not your job to control what they hear. Your job is to send it out. Right. And so what I've realized is it's just like a patient, like I can't control their, their healing process. My job is to deliver the thrust in the best way and the most like you know, beautiful, artful adjustment that I can and communicate around that, right? So same is true with giving a talk. It's actually a very similar concept, right? Where it's like, I don't know what words that I'm going to say you needed to hear, or if I'm giving it a talk to a hundred people and it's really only meant for the one person that's going to pick something up, that's not my end of the bargain to control that part. My, my end of the bargain is to show up authentically and, you know, practice my talk so I can deliver it with like a powerful message behind, you know, the core of me. Mm, yeah, absolutely love that. That's key. Um, because I was the same, you know, I had nerves and fears in the beginning, and you know, I just had to realize that my mission was bigger than my fears. And if I let my fears be bigger than my mission, then I was making it about myself. Whereas if I made my mission bigger than my fears, then I made it about others. Right. So, and Bobby, I imagine you do that in every part of your practice, right? Like you you put the the mission and the vision is what pulls you through doing the hard stuff, whether it's giving an employee review or giving a talk or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, spot on the mic, spot on the mic. Okay, so guys, let's talk about step one of this. How do we get talks? How do we fill talks? Now, first thing that I want to say uh, is that there are multiple kinds of talks. There's internal workshops that you run within your office. There's external talks that you can go into to other people's offices. I call them someone else is throwing a party and you're going to their party or I'm throwing a party and I'm inviting all the guests. You know? So actually filling workshops when you understand the mechanics of it is a very simple process. We inside of our office would do dozens and dozens of workshops every single year. Um, in fact, if you count better results faster workshops, we'd probably do hundreds of workshops a year. We do a dinner on average every month. We do an advanced workshop on average every month. So that's 24 workshops from internal inside of the office, which are new patient generating um, opportunities. Our internal workshops, which are advanced workshops, we have a combination of external people and guests. We purpose built our 
space so that you can turn it sideways and line up everyone. And we've managed to fit roughly just below 90 people in that space. So we can get about 90 people inside of our office. So, and we do run workshops with 80, 90 people in there. So in that respect, we're doing workshop every two weeks. Um, and then we're doing a better results faster workshop, which is different. I don't want to confuse it. BRF is for people who have just started care. Um, they do bring some guests, but it's not per se a new patient getting workshop, what I call. Um, that one runs every two weeks inside of our office as well. And then we go out and speak externally into other people's companies. And I can tell you that chiropractors often have this self-learning belief of it's hard to get workshops. It's actually very simple. Um, it's very, very simple to get them if you have a system for it. So I want to talk today specifically about, okay, the internal workshops. So how do you, you made a decision to do a workshop. Great. Here's my advice to you. Always start with better results faster. I was talking to someone on a mastermind call earlier this week and this person was saying to me how, you know, they've done a bunch of BRF workshops now, about eight or nine. And they're a little bit disappointed. They're like, oh, we've only had like three new patients come from it. And, you know, we're expecting that we're going to get more. And you could see that energy was a little bit down around it. And one of the things that I said with them is I go, no, better results faster is the perfect place to start training your speaking muscle. Learn the ability of stage presence, learn the ability of stage charisma, learn how to speak, learn how to lead, learn how to alter your tone, your facial expressions, learn linking between signs, uh, sorry, between slides. The linking between slides is critical. You've got to learn and understand, okay, how do you frame up the next slide? You've got to learn presentation mastery and nuances. You've got to learn eyeballing contact, right? There's so many key things and you're learning it through BRF, right? So if you're at the point now where you're like, all right, I'm ready to go in front of an audience of guests and I want to start turning this thing into a new patient machine, the perfect one to start with is internal advanced workshops. And let me share with you why. Um, I guarantee that everyone listening to this call has uh, something small, but it's actually quite large in their practice called a patient list. And that is every single person who's ever been in your office before. Lona, am I accurate? You've got a patient list? Oh, yeah. Sizable. Probably mm -hmm. thousands of people on there. Yes. Yep. Okay. Hooray, guess what? We just found leads, right? So essentially, if you are at the point, like what Lona just said, where you're ready to share your heart, ready to share your mission, and you're convicted in what you do, that's the precursor. You've got to be convicted and certain what you do. Now, step number one that I tell everyone is create a little video, make it no longer than two minutes. And in that video, you're going to be sharing your purpose and your vision. Borrow my purpose statement if you want. Hey, guys, one of the things here at Cairo, insert your name, one, two, three, is our job we see as a doctor is not just to adjust people inside our office. It's actually to lead and educate people as well. In fact, it's that piece of educating that transforms lives. It's that piece of educating that creates breakthroughs for people to actually have better outcomes with their health. And so we here take that education piece super seriously. So for that reason, we are starting a new initiative at Cairo, insert your name here. And that initiative is every single week, we're gonna be getting out, or if you're doing an internal workshop, we're going to every single month or whatever cadence you want to do, start doing our advanced internal workshop series here inside of our office. Well, we've heard your calls about what are those areas of health that you want to know more about? What are those areas that you want to dig deep about? We're going to be selecting really key topics. And I can help you guys with topics that are like really hot topics in terms of they're very easy to build, right? That's not a problem at all. Just reach out to us. Um, but you're going to insert, all right, certain topics there. So if this is of interest to you, our first insert name of workshop here is happening on this and this day. Seats are strictly limited inside our practice. We have space for 40 people. So if this is of interest to you, they are going to fill up quickly. Hit reply to this email and just write, yes, please. And our team is going to be getting in contact with you and get, get, going to get you set up and organized for the workshop. Now, this is the workshop that also is available to your guests we strongly encourage spouses, friends, anyone that you thought of in your mind that needs to be here, bring them along to this workshop. So guys, remember, seats are limited. We've only got whatever it is, 40, 50 spots, and this is going to fill up probably in the next three days. So hit reply, let us know, and our team's going to get in contact with you, and they're going to help you get organized. Okay, look forward to leading you towards greater health and seeing you inside our office of the workshop. Bang. Put that together in a video. Okay, post it on one of the video hosting platforms, and then... Email out to everyone in your database, email out, oh, sorry, SMS that out to everyone in your database. And I didn't say just your active people, everyone. Because mm -hmm. you're getting this is the reactivation campaign and a new patient generating campaign and a great um, retention campaign for your existing people as well. Bang, there we go. First workshop's full. So good. And so true. That's been our experience too. As long as we 
do the due diligence to put it out to everyone, it fills up so quickly, especially if you have a call to action. Like maybe there is also an incentive of like the first 20 that register, <laughs> get some sort of raffle or something, you know, like that helps too. Yeah, totally. Bonuses are massive. Absolutely. Right. So um, spot on the mark. So that's how we fill up our internal workshops. Now, I know today we're going to talk about, all right, sourcing external workshop, filling internal workshop, filling dinner workshop. But to be honest, I feel as though it's like complete separate um, episodes. I feel as though internal workshop is its own beast. And if on this podcast now from today's episode, we inspire you to say, you know what? Two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to start speaking more. All right. And two, I'm going to put a date in my calendar for my first internal workshop and I'm just going to replay what Dr. Bobby Alona just talked about and I'm going to fill up my first workshop and make that for yourself a Q4 initiative. Okay. Yes. What do you reckon about that, Lena? Yeah, let's get going. Just put the date down and then craft the talk. <laughs> Is that how you did it the first time? Did you like, oh, did you kind of do all this planning first and then select a date at the end? Or did you just put a date in and then force you to get, get it together? We still do it that way usually. Yeah, we like put the dates out and then we figure out what the talks are going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yep, there you go, team. There you go. So that's how we ultimately feel like internal workshops, right? Now, um, like I said, I mean, two minds about going down and opening up the box about how do we source external workshops because that is a whole system in itself and I don't want to kind of like cut it short. But internal workshop is the perfect starting point. Use your internal lists like that. Start displaying it publicly everywhere. If you're in the academy, you've got access to the Body Signals workshops where you have everything there for you. You've got your slides for you. You've got the research behind those topics there for you. You've got the posters. You've got the handouts. You've got the email campaigns. It's all built out for you. It's in the TRP Academy. Those of you guys who aren't the TRP Academy or want more information on this, please reach out to Dr. Lona. You'll have a link, guys, in the show notes or reach out to myself. But don't be the person who just, here's a great idea because here's one thing that I know. And Lona, I love your take on this. When you listen to podcasts like this, when you read books, when you go to a seminar, okay, these are the places that I've learned in my mind. That's where you capture ideas. That's where you kind of um, oh, have breakthroughs. That's where you have epiphanies. BJ would call them thought flashes. Mm. However, if you do nothing with them, it leads to no outcomes. So success is reserved for the action taker. It's about hearing what you just heard right now today and saying, you know what? Bang, here's the action step that I'm actually going to take. Put it in your daily planner, select a date and take action. And then I would love to hear your results in the back of that first workshop. Lona, what are your thoughts on that? So good, Bobby. Yes. And your thought flashes are placed on your heart and your mind because you are meant to walk them out. So you can keep resisting them, but they keep coming. So you might as well start to like take action. Yep. You got it there. So there you go, team. That's how you're going to fill up your first workshop. Let's get started. Okay, let's start putting that video together. That's all you need. And then email it out to your whole database. If you get stuck with like tech stacks or technology, don't get stuck with that. It's actually very simple when you know how to do it. There's two bits of software that are really easy to use. If you need help, advice on any of that, please reach out. We can definitely help guide you. But if you enjoyed today's podcast, guys, hey, please make sure you follow us. So hit the three dots on the top right-hand section, subscribe. Better yet, give us a five-star review. You know, we can see there's five-star reviews out there. A lot of people are messaging me, messaging me, hey, this is so awesome. I'm loving it. This is fantastic. I'm like, hey, the best way you can help us out, guys, is give us a five-star podcast review. It really helps us help more people. And it's a super simple process to do. Dr. Lina, until next time. Thanks, I'll Bobby. Next. You're amazing. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic, and what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like the podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, please click the links in the show notes to schedule a call.